Okay, so welcome back to another video. So here we'd like to calculate the Laplace transform of 1 divided by 1 plus x in respect to the variable s. So you would think that if you take an introductory to differential equations course, once you get to the contents of learning about Laplace transforms and all that, you would think that a prof you're, typically a professor will actually give you the tables of these Laplace transforms in order to help you remember by it. So you would think a, a rational function, or rather of just a function itself, this basic can be easily remembered by from that table, right? Well, not exactly in this case here. So what we want to know is that specifically, if I were to take the Laplace transform, so let me first actually write the definition, which says that L sub f of t in respect to s. So t is in terms of the time variable, a real value, and s is the frequency complex variable, so in, the, in complex numbers, in other words, we have that this is equal to the improper integral from e to the power negative s times t of some function f of t and then dt. So with this being the case, suppose that for now, I'll call the whole thing of the Laplace transform capital F of s. We let that be this following Laplace transform that we're gonna be working with. So one plus one divided by one plus x and then in respect to s. So in other words, our, our function f of t, in other words, we let that be one divided by one plus x. So really the whole thing is that we're actually wanting to calculate the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative s times t divided by one plus t, or this, this actually has to be changed to an x since we're dealing with in terms of the x of given. So x over here, then x, and then x over here. So t is just the naming the standard um, naming convention that we're that was being used, but now we're using x. So this is what we actually want to calculate, but it doesn't look actually as easy as it looks if you were to find some simple antiderivative that is giving something a bit elementary. So with with so with that, we're gonna actually have to do a little bit of you know rewriting in terms of using the properties of Laplace transform. Then actually, there's a bit of differential equations involved. I know that I know Laplace transform is involved with is a differential equations topic, but typically when you're you're working with Laplace transform, it's just it's mainly just dealing with just the improper integral itself. But there's actually some other things outside of that we'll be dealing with to evaluate this. So that's where the fun part comes in. And then with that, so um, that's all I got to say. There, there's, there is a special function involved as, as part of this answer. So uh, get ready for that. So let's actually just jump right in. So here's the thing to note. We'll, we'll break this up. So notice that if I were to take the Laplace transform of the number one in respect to S, so yes, this is actually a pretty basic Laplace transform to evaluate. It's even in your tables of Laplace transform. In other words, that's the same thing written as the improper integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative s times x and then dx. Guess what? This is actually pretty simple to integrate with the, using the u substitution and then plug in your bounds from all that. We have negative one divided by s e to the power negative s times x from infinity from zero to infinity, plug this all back in, and we actually get that this is simply just one over s as validated in your table of integrals. It's as simple as that. Okay, so what's the point of all this? So the thing we're actually gonna use is this little property, and then that's when we get into the interesting, the fun part. The property we'll be using is that we take the Laplace transform of x to the power n, so for some natural number n, of f of x, and then in respect to s, in other words, it comes out this nice little form for negative one to the power n, multiplied by the partial derivative in respect to n, and, well, in respect to s, and then take that the nth, the nth partial derivative, and then multiply with the Laplace transform, and let me fix that, that's a little funny, of f of x, and then in respect to s. And so with this in mind, so what we can do here is to break up everything for starting over here, the Laplace transform of one. So going back to earlier over here, so in order to break this up, I have the Laplace transform of one of s. So in other words, I can write that as the same thing as the Laplace transform of one plus x divided by one plus x and s. Then we can actually break this up using some linearity. So now that's written as one divided by one plus x. Interestingly enough, that's actually the same thing as will be defined for capital F of S. And then now break this up again. So we have the Laplace transform of x divided by one plus x and then in respect to S. So this is good that for over here, this specific Laplace transform that we actually get this little identity over here that we can use. So suppose that I let x, well, n equals one. So we literally just plug one back into everything. And then we have the capital F of S over here. So that would have to mean this is a negative. We're only taking the first derivative of the with respect to S. And so in other words, then 
that's actually left with capital F, capital F of S over here, everything. So in other words, that's written as the same thing. So we put everything back together than what we solved for. So now I have, this is negative F prime of S. And then I add this with F of S. And then of course we said that the Laplace transform of one, we said from earlier, that's the same thing as one divided by S. So put that back in. Then let's actually fix up the rearrangement. So this is the same thing as F prime of S minus F of S and then set this equal to negative one divided by s. Okay, so that's good so far. So you'll actually notice that specifically with the unknown function we're trying to solve for, that this is actually in the form of a first order linear equation. So that would have to mean that we have to find some integrating factor to multiply to both sides, then undo that just so we can actually get that as a terms of going backwards of the differentiation of the product rule, implicit differentiation. And then we have the negative one divided by s from there, integrate that. So let's actually first find our, our integrating factor. So move s, we'll call this. So that means it's associated with this function over here. So that's a negative one. So that's written as e to the power negative, the integral of ds, which is now just equal to e to the power negative s. Multiply both sides, so e to the negative s, then f prime of s, then I subtract e to the negative s and then multiply with f of s and set this equal to, so multiply the e to the negative s, so e or minus e to the negative s and then divide it by s. Okay, so undoing all this, so that means in other words, that's the same thing as the differentiating with respect to s of e to the negative s, then capital F of s, and then that set that equal to negative e to the negative s and then divide it by s. So that's all we're left with. So now from here, let's actually now integrate both sides in respect to S so here and then here. Undoing this will give us E to the negative S then capital F of S. And then over here, we're just left with negative E to the negative S and then divided by S and DS. Okay, so this is actually the special function comes into handy over here. So what you'll notice is that it's actually in a nice form of the exponential integral. I know that this is supposed to be bounds, but if we actually think of it this way, such that if I were to take the derivative of the exponential integral, and so what we'll note is that if I were to take the derivative of the exponential integral, so e i and then s, so in other words, in definitions of term of that integral, that's the same thing written as the integral from negative infinity to s of e to the power negative or e to the power t divided by t and then dt then that's basically just applying the fundamental theorem of calculus and all that so we have that this is just e to the power s divided by s so therefore if to put the substitution back d to the power uh, in respect to s of the exponential integral in respect of negative s therefore it's going to be e to the power negative s and then divided by s okay then with that, so now going back to over here, so I have E negative S capital F of S, then set this equal to, so what we have over here is gonna be now just negative E I of negative S, and this is an indefinite integral, so make sure to add the plus C at the end. So of course we have to find for that unknown constant in order to finish everything off and just divide the E to negative S to both sides in order to get our F of S, which is the Laplace transform that we want to evaluate. Going back to what the standard definition of our Laplace transform that we want to calculate, which is over here, if I were to plug, if I were to take that limit as s approaches infinity of this integral, so that actually means that as s approaches infinity, so that means capital F at infinity, well, so approaches infinity is going to equal zero. And then what we can use is the little fact that if I were to take the limit as s approaches negative infinity of the exponential integral at s, this is basically just equal to zero. Um, if you want to put things a little more rigorously on how to prove this, you can actually just use the definition of the exponential integral. You use a u sub, plug that back in, then notice that if I were to take that limit and that integral, and I can actually use Lebesgue's dominated convergence theorem to actually interchange that. You take that limit, then the whole thing actually just becomes zero, and that's how we get this. So put that out of the way. So we can actually put all this back together over here as we take it approaches um, infinity for here. So that means that's going to be zero here, or I should be put, I should be pointing over here. So this is zero over here. That's going to be zero. So therefore, that means c is going to equal zero. And so we're left with just e to the power of negative s times f of capital F of s, which is just negative the exponential integral at negative or negative s. Then all that's left is just divide e to the negative s to both sides, and then that actually just finishes it off. So therefore, capital F of s, which is the Laplace transform that we wanted to calculate, one divided by one plus x in respect to s. 
is just going to equal to negative e to the power s multiplied by the exponential integral evaluated at negative s. And so therefore that is our final answer of the Laplace transform over here. So what looks like a basic function, a rational function that you think that it's actually part of the tables, but it's not, and not in, at least in that form. And so it leads to something a little more um, advanced if you think about it. So yeah, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.